it's an amazing week to hear about the, the, the children gathering around going seizure and this is what they go into survival mode and protection mode of their the yeah. little lad in their class. And that's why probably you're here tonight is to normalise the conversation when it comes to epilepsy. Yeah, that's the idea. It, I mean, it wasn't always that way. Um, I was, when did you decide? To I do? was When did I decide to become yeah. involved with... Yeah. Well, it was an easy enough call, to be honest with you. It was 2006. Um, I was reading a newspaper article one day. I'd been working here for about five years at that stage. And I saw a newspaper article saying that Brainwave, as they were at the time, who were now Epilepsy Ireland, were looking for somebody in the public eye to act as a patron, somebody who would simply come out and talk at times whenever it was needed in locations like this or, you know, uh, to represent them in the media. Um, I spoke to them afterwards. I was the only person who put my hand up and said, I'll, I'll have a go with that if that's okay. I think they were presuming they were going to be very lucky and find somebody who had some sort of peripheral connection sure. to epilepsy somewhere. I was the only person who applied and I got the job okay, by so, default. So is it I was the only one in. It's it, a true story. It, okay. Yeah, and, and, and you obviously go back to your first seizure. Do you remember? I don't know if people remember at the moment, but do you remember when it started to come on? I, I've told the story. You said, I'm never there. I don't remember them. When they happen, I'll, I'll get told about it afterwards. Okay. I'll be sitting here talking to you. We'll be having a conversation. And next thing you know, I'm waking up and there's, there's a crowd of people around me. Yeah. I was 16 when my first one happened. It was St. Stephen's night. I was sitting at home. I was with my younger brother. We were playing a board game. And again, because I wasn't there, my mother tells this story. Yes. She tells it quite well. Um, she uh, said, you just stood up, took a strange look on your face, and you went over and took the Christmas tree with you. You are allowed to laugh at that because it's a funny story. <laughs> Afterwards, my mother, it was only about 10 years later, she started adding the end to the story, which was, you were always very dramatic when you were a child. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true story. That's how yeah. it happened. Yeah, First okay. time around. And, and what, what has triggered? Do you know what the cause of your... Nothing. Is? Just random. There isn't. For some people, um, epilepsy comes as a result, like Luke, of having something like a brain tumour. For some people, it's as a result of having had some form of head trauma. Uh, something like encephalitis can bring it on as well. Yeah. And then for some people, like me, and I think we're a relatively small subsection of that, it just comes out of nowhere. Uh, some people develop it when they're quite younger. To develop it any later than 10 or 11 or 12 is rarer. So Certainly what's... at 16 or 17... What's your, your, your mode to keep going then? Or, or do you worry about the, the idea of dropping down on the ground in the middle of a... I, 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 can't. I was, can't. I was 16 when this happened the first time. I turned 40 in about two weeks. So I've been doing this every day since then. And I've been medicated every day since I was 16. You get to a point where I think the, the coping mechanism has to be, you just put it in a little box and you put it away to one side and go, I'm going to have another seizure. It's going to happen at some point. It may be in three minutes' time. I hope it's not in the middle of your live chat show. <laughs> it may be in three years' time. Yeah. And when it happens, I'll deal with that then. And in the interim, I just have to, to get on with it. Are there restrictions then on you on a day-to-day -day basis, things you can't do if I you I try are... to not let that happen. No, yeah. I mean, and again, I suppose my, I'm always conscious my situation is different from, um, from other people, and in particular from, from somebody like Luke, who has seizures that happen every single day. The only real restriction that gets placed on my life is that at some point I may have a seizure, I've injured myself a couple of times when that's happened. I've ended up in hospital needing stitches. Um, because you've just because I fell ground. over and hit a concrete wall once with my head. Yeah, I just Did stitches you? on the back of my on the back of my head there. Oh, oh, still... Where were you that time? I was in work. I was in the middle of doing a radio show at the time. This was many years ago. Uh, I obviously went out to take a quick toilet break during a long song. When I came back, I must have again because I wasn't really there. Took a seizure, and just outside the door of the studio hit a concrete wall because the guy who was on after me came in afterwards and I said, no, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm just, I'm fine, everything's all right. He said, no, you're bleeding from your head, you have a head wound. I, th I think we might need to take you to the hospital and that yeah. happened and, and he took over after Tell that. Tell me, uh, there's lots of people tonight probably wondering, what if somebody dropped yeah. and started having a seizure in front of them? What is the first thing? Because there are myths, aren't there? The preconceptions are, the, are, the, are the, the, the thing that it's hardest to deal with when you're trying to get a message out like, like we've been doing for, for the last number of years. Um, don't put a spoon in someone's mouth under any circumstances. You might break their teeth with the spoon. It's the world's worst idea. Some people try and put their fingers in someone's mouth to stop them from swallowing their tongue. You're going to get your fingers bitten off. That's the worst thing that's going to happen in that okay. situation. Don't do it. Um, if you do come across somebody who's having a seizure, you should ideally just move items away from them when they are around. Uh, anything that they might potentially just bang themselves off or bang their head off. Don't restrain them. That's something people think they right. have to do as well. You're liable to injure yourself or them. Uh, stay with them until the seizure over. I know that seems like a kind of relatively simple thing to do, but don't leave them until you're sure that people are recovered and absolutely safe. S you stick your jacket under their head if you find so them. So sim simple but necessary. It is, and on the off chance, I mean, people usually act 
through default and they go for calling an ambulance, it's happened a lot of times okay. with, with me, it's usually only if the seizure lasts longer than five, six minutes that you might need to seek medical help or if somebody's actually injured themselves and you've seen that happen.